Who does Notre Dame hire now? Yes. I, it's it's real simple. The problem is they were both co-staff members together at Cincinnati like a year ago. Are we sure it's that simple? I got I another one. It's that simple. Yeah, yeah, I got another one too. Okay. Matt Campbell? Yeah. yeah. Possibility for sure. I... The most interesting thing to me, and Chip, I, I know, like we talked about earlier in the show before you got here, like there was the quote from Brian Kelly a few months ago about how Marcus Freeman is going to be the next head coach at Notre no, Dame. You corrected me that that's not exactly what he was saying. He was saying Marcus Freeman is going to be a head coach. Yeah. So I, I don't know, like if I don't know if Notre Dame is going to look at Marcus Freeman and like the plan was for him to take over this quickly. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that he's definitely got a legit shot. I don't know if they're not – I don't think they're going to just name him without doing a search because I think, obviously, the most interesting, you know, giant elephant in the room here is Luke Fickle, who is at Cincinnati, who has turned down Big Ten jobs, and it's not been a great secret that Fickle is happy at Cincinnati, and there are only really a few jobs that he would consider leaving Cincinnati for, and they're either like the Ohio State, Michigan, a huge Big Ten job, or Notre Dame. And now Notre Dame is coming open at the time. Luke Fickle has his Cincinnati team on the precipice of the college football playoff. So he's going to have a decision to make because who knows when the next time Notre Dame is going to come open. If they get this higher right, it might be another decade. It might be 20 years. Look at how long Brian Kelly's been there. So does Luke Fickle entertain the Notre Dame job while preparing his team for a playoff berth? Or does Brian Kelly take the LSU job when he's preparing for a playoff berth? We could have two coaches that are one foot out the door, but I'm going to stick this one out. Like, have fun with that. I mean, this is going to come off as not being very polite. It's freaking Notre Dame or Cincinnati. If I know. you really thought you had a chance to win, okay. But you're worse this year than you were last year, Cincinnati-wise. George is a hell of a lot better. There's no real reason to believe you can block Michigan. Uh, I, yeah, but he'll if, coach. If that's the job you want. Coach. Luke Fickle yeah. may take the job, but he'll coach to the end. And you're I, allowed I to do Kelly that. Too. You're allowed to do that when it's the group of five to the power five jump. Mm -hmm. You don't think Brian Kelly could? No. I don't know. It's, it's LSU, <laughs> boy. I don't think LSU's going to like that too much. LSU's going to be like, nope, you got to get here. You got to finish up this recruiting class. Who cares about losing in your first round game against Georgia? <laughs> yeah. This so is, we've uh, got Fickle, Campbell, Freeman, and Marcus, Marcus Freeman. Freeman. Any, anybody else? Urban. Yeah. It's gonna, I don't think it's – I'm don't. i just saying it's going to come up. I don't no, think no, it's no, no. We need to thing. say Urban Meyer so that it gets put in the transcript and goes into the SEO. Good okay? point. Urban, Urban Meyer, Meyer, Notre Dame, Notre Urban Dame, Meyer, 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 Meyer. I mean, <laughs> nobody in the SEC you would think right now, right – I don't suspect that they want to go coordinator unless it's an internal guy. They've already had the chance to evaluate like, like Marcus Freeman uh, or Tommy you know, Reese. Who? Tommy, Tommy Reese. Reese. Yeah. Oh, Listen, good man. I think Tommy Reese gets in. I, th I think the Notre Dame does the thing where they call in both coordinators and they say that they're both candidates and they allow them to go through the interview process. Are they realistic candidates? I don't know, but I the, think it will be considered. The other guy, maybe you would think about, if you want to stay in the coordinator vein, but like the coordinator you've had a chance to evaluate uh, would, would be Elko, you know, m m maybe yeah. if, if the ad in there was like, Hey, this guy's a stud. I, I don't think that they're going to go outside the family and go coordinator. So for me, it's like sitting head coach or coordinator who's actually worked there. I think hiring a coordinator who you've not actually worked with and seen how he works is too big of a gamble for a job like the Irish Wild card name. Pat Fitzgerald. Mm. I mean, that'd be great I mean, for Pat. I would laugh my ass off. I mean, It'd I think great. that I their offenses think... are so damn bad, dude. Like they have been the worst power yeah. offense two of the last three years. That is yeah. way too big of a gamble. Like Pat Fitzgerald cannot produce good offenses. He is an he Irish produces Catholic winners, from the south though. side of Chicago. And it is Notre Dame. And I know Irish Catholics from the south side of Chicago. And while Pat bleeds purple now, I'm telling you, grow it up. He wasn't bleeding purple. <laughs> he was bleeding green and gold. So... <laughs> What about Mark's? You said nobody from the SEC. What about Mark Stoops? I think that's uh, a, how I, how do Catholics feel about divorce now? 
we're fine. We're, we don't care. Okay. All right. I, I think that I was, I was talking to somebody who was DMing me about the a Kentucky fan was DMing me earlier today, asking me if I thought Mark Stoops was going to be leaving for like LSU or something. And I, I don't have any intel on this, but I really do feel like Mark Stoops is happy at Kentucky. And unless Iowa came open, I wouldn't worry about it too much if I'm a Kentucky fan. Good suggestion, I think, from uh, one of our listeners in the comment section, David Shaw. If his stock was higher, it just feels like his stock is so low. I don't think that. I th- unless you want to turn Notre Dame into Stanford, I don't think that's going to work too well. And I mean what Stanford is right now. Right. What about that's the problem with his stock? Miranda? Right now? Oh, Dan- sorry, Tom. Dan Mullen? <laughs> that's laugh out loud. I think, I think, yeah, no, I think T stars or no, Alex Rude in the chat has the great idea. I think Notre Dame needs to check out Matt Nagy from the Chicago Bears. (laughs) I was going to say Brian Kelly uh, leaving the job means job security for Matt Nagy because you can't have the Notre Dame coach just Mm -hmm. flirting out there as coming to get your job at any point. Do you think Jeff Halfley is regretting signing that extension a couple hours ago? I think Jeff one of these probably though, smart enough to not sign something that would prevent him from getting like Notre Dame. <laughs> one of the one of these deal like we're gonna see a Manny Diaz the Temple for two weeks, and then a school comes in and says, "No, that's our guy." Because I think Halfley would be a great hire. So it was for like, and the the argument would be that because it was Temple, nobody cared, and that in the future it ain't going to be Temple; it's going to be a jo- a big time job. Mm-hmm. This is this is going to be. I think it's going to be. I think it'll end up either being Freeman, Campbell, or Fickle. Dave Clawson? I think that would be great. I just don't know if that's going to be, quote-unquote, sexy enough. Gosh, he's one, though. You know, the these halfway schools thing. need to get over sexy. They need to get past it. Like, get over the home run name. Give me a coach that wins. And that's hard sell because your job is on the line if you're the athletic director. Like, you're Jack Swarbrick. you got to sell it. you got to win the press conference. But man, you need some more athletic directors with some balls that just come out and say, "No, this is our guy. We're going to stick with him." You know, but, that would be a Matt, Matt Campbell's not sexy. Like a Matt Campbell. I think he is. Name. You don't think he's a name that they're like celebrating because he's lifted up Iowa State? I he'd win the press conference. Like he would win him over in five minutes talking. But I still think he's a big enough name. Clawson would be a like Notre Dame fans would be like what? Like <laughs> they would not be into that. Who's the offensive coordinator with the Patriots right now? Isn't it so McDaniel's? Yeah. yeah. Where's, where's, Does he have a decided schematic advantage that he can bring to South Bend to really turn the program around? He could do the Charlie Weiss thing and bring the rings on the recruiting trail and just say, <laughs> look at these. Come on. <laughs> what about, yeah, there's Cam- Camilo Perez in the, in the comments there. Chris Peterson, who was rumored to be intrigued by the idea of possibly coming back to Washington. He was rumored to be possibly interested in the USC job. Notre Dame might be his, you know, you can recruit our kind of guys to Notre Dame. Okay. So if we want to talk no, about, the, Oh, go ahead. The one thing that uh, Halfley is not super proven as a head coach, but he did a great job at Ohio state as a coordinator. He has NFL ties. He's a guy who understands how to recruit people on the academic side because Boston college, you know, can't exactly get a lot of 2.0 guys into school and keep them into school. Um, he did take Jerkovic, the player that Notre Dame was super excited to have, the guy who was supposed to elevate them and become their next level dude, the guy who the Irish could not develop under Brian Kelly. And Jerkovic is absolutely balling for Boston College. I think he's going to come back to school, but I mean, he was easily NFL bound had he not gotten hurt earlier this year. Uh, that's something that I'm, I bet they'll look at it like, huh, that guy did a pretty good job there. <laughs> 